The world is about to receive a shocking wake-up call. According to an ancient prophecy found in the book of Ezekiel, the God of the Bible is going to put the entire world on official notice that he is the one true God. The prophet writes, And in that day I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Ezekiel foretells that in the last days, Russia, Turkey, Iran, and six other member nations will invade Israel from the far parts of the north. They are coming down to conquer Israel and to take over its plunder and great booty. But who gets the victory? Not America. Not the Israeli Defense Forces. But the Lord God stopped these invaders supernaturally with a great earthquake, pestilence, and bloodshed, flooding rains, great hailstones, and fire and brimstone. Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 provide every aspect of this foretold event. The stage is set. The prophecy is ready to happen. But first, Iran's nuclear deal must be met with Israel's fury. The Isaiah 49 prophecy of Elam, Iran, and what I believe is the Boucher nuclear power plant is getting ready to take place soon. Israel will not stand by. Meanwhile, Iran will not forget the assassination of Soleimani Neither will all of its proxies from the Houthi rebels to Hezbollah, which will be very soon coming place with the Psalm 83 war. We'll talk about that soon. You guys might have seen on Monday, March 7th, four F-16 tactical aircraft of the Israeli Air Force attacked Damascus Airport with eight cruise missiles. The Syrian Air Defense destroyed seven missiles. Supposedly one of them hit, and it took out two of their leading commanders. Israel keeps pushing Iran to the breaking point, and it's going to break very soon. What Joe Biden is doing with the revived JCPOA Iran nuclear deal is forcing Israel to launch a preemptive strike against Iran by offering the Iranian regime a new nuclear deal that guarantees it will develop nuclear weapons, something that Israel and its Sunni Arab neighbors cannot allow to survive. It will give the Ayatollah $7 billion in ransom for American captives, and it will remove sanctions from some of the world's worst terrorists, including the IRGC. What this means is that Iran will emerge at the end of this nuclear power, just as it could have under the old deal, which is the whole reason that Israel opposed it openly, and the Sunni Arab states opposed it as well. Theoretically, the United States would help defend Israel from Iran, but the Obama administration deliberately undermined Israel's self-defense against Iran by leaking potential Israeli attack plans to the media. Israel could trust the previous president's commitment, not so with Biden's. So there's no alternative. Either Israel has to allow Iran to become a nuclear power and live in fear of the day it becomes the next Ukraine, or it has to take out the regime first, risking retaliatory strikes by Iranian-backed Hezbollah and Palestinian terror groups, which is all part of the Psalm 83 prophecy. The only consolation is that thanks to Obama and Biden's bumbling, and these Arab states around them who also view Iran as a threat are fully aligned with Israel. But war is coming. Indeed, war is the only thing the new Iran deal will guarantee. This is what they were showing after the attack of Soleimani when they came back and attacked 
our U.S. bases there in Iraq and Syria that they continue to this day with Katyusha rockets. These Iranians are standing by right now. But this is getting ready to go to a whole new level very soon as they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. But what comes first, the Isaiah 17 destruction of Damascus, Jeremiah 49 on Iran, or the Psalm 83 war where the Arab Confederacy attacks Israel? <laughs> ایران با همه وجود او رو به زانو در خواهد آورد. نمره 14 اجازه درگیری تایید میشه چند فرمان موشک اسرائیلی در تیر رس ما هستن شلیک کردن خدای من بوم بوم فجر شد Here are some terror groups mentioned in Psalm 83 that will attack soon. Uniting all Shia terror groups in the Middle East, militias in Iraq, Hezbollah in Syria, and even assistance to the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Hezbollah is preparing to get back on track as the spearhead of the Shia revolution in the area. And any American intervention is unwelcomed. Hezbollah currently has upwards of 150,000 missiles ready for Israel. And out of the 31,173 verses in the Bible, in Psalm 83, there are 18 verses. And out of the 1,189 chapters in the 150 Psalms, the only place you're going to find the Bible, any resemblance of Hezbollah, would be there entire in Psalm 83, T-Y-R-E. Now, Tyre and Israel had some relationships in the past with King Solomon and King Hiram when they were building the temple, but this is the only time in Psalm 83 when you're actually seeing them talking about a conflict, and the conflict is what exactly they want here. Is they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth so that their name is no more in remembrance, and the reason that they are saying this is because they don't want a two-state solution. They want a one-state solution. They want the flag of Palestine to fly across the entire area that was promised to Abraham, which included there from the Nile River, basically, all the way to the Euphrates River. And these are all the nations and all the peoples and all the areas that are mentioned there in Psalm 83. But guys, their rockets are ready to go. We know that Isaiah 17 with Damascus is coming, but Hezbollah Pay attention. Israel just exposed details about the precision guided missile project that Iran is developing with its proxy in Lebanon, Hezbollah. If completed, this program could have enabled Hezbollah to remotely fire missiles to any location in Israel with alarming accuracy. 
Iran began its attempts to arm its proxy in Lebanon, Hezbollah, with these sophisticated missiles in 2013. First, they attempted to smuggle fully assembled guided missiles via Syria to Lebanon, but the missiles failed to reach their destination. Then Iran shifted its strategy toward assembling precision guided missiles inside Lebanon. Under the blind eye of the Lebanese government, the Rafiq Hariri International Airport, the Beirut Port, and the Masna border crossing all serve as collection points for missile parts transferred by Iran to Hezbollah. In order to assemble these missiles, Hezbollah built facilities in urban areas across Lebanon, including its capital, Beirut. Iran would send its commanders to Lebanon to hold seminars for Hezbollah operatives on how to assemble and operate precision-guided missiles. Overseeing this project in Lebanon is Muhammad Hussein Zada Hejazi, a senior commander of the Iranian Quds Force, who went as far as moving to Lebanon with his family. For two years, despite various efforts carried out by Israel, Hezbollah furthered their attempts to produce precision-guided missiles. In September 2018, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the UN and exposed three precision-guided missile manufacturing facilities embedded in Beirut. The state of Lebanon did not show any resistance to the construction of these sites in the heart of their country, even though it endangered the lives of the Lebanese people and was in clear violation of UN resolutions. Lebanese officials, including the foreign minister, even backed Hezbollah. Over the last few months, Iran expedited its efforts to arm Hezbollah with precision weapons by accelerating the construction of production facilities in Lebanon. Iran's deep involvement in Hezbollah's force buildup threatens the stability of the state of Lebanon and the region as a whole. As you can see, Hezbollah and the surrounding neighborhood get involved with the surprise in Psalm 83 war. This Israeli nuclear site is being targeted by Iran, but there's a reason that Iran, Persia, is not mentioned yet in the Psalm 83 war. Why is that? Well, for many years, many Bible scholars have been following the conventional view of Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, the ill-fated invasion attempt of Magog and its allies, notably with Persia or Iran. With the growing tensions between Iran as a nuclear power in Israel, these passages are the subject of much current discussion as debate. As you guys will see, just looking through YouTube. However, the conventional view still leaves a number of puzzling inconsistencies and contradictions. Ezekiel 38 indicates that Israel is dwelling safely and without walls. Yet, if I were to go to visit Israel today, I would see the 430 mile long wall, 25 feet high. You know, they're constantly being shelled continually with hundreds of missiles from both Hamas there in Gaza and Hezbollah from Lebanon. And you've got these missiles and drones from Iran that are ready to take place and hit Israel. It's hard to say that Israel is living safely today without walls. It's also significant to notice that the motivation of the attempt invasion by Magog, Russia, and its allies there from the north is to take the spoil like the gold, silver, cattle, and goods. Israel is destined to become the most wealthy country on the planet. And Russia knows this. As we pay attention to the East Med pipeline and what they're doing with their natural gas, how they're bypassing Russia by sending fuel to Europe. And this is going to anger Russia very soon coming in the days. But the Ezekiel account here in Ezekiel 38 and 39 includes participants from different lands. You know, so this leaves us with a puzzling an anomaly. The people listed in Ezekiel seem to exclude any of the bordering nations, basically the nations that surround Israel, their neighborhood, the Palestinians, the Lebanese, the Syrians, the Iraqis, the Jordanians, the Egyptians, the Saudi Arabians. Sheba and Dedan, towards the end, only appear ex as spectators, rather as part than as participants as they protest what's going on on the attack and why is Russia coming down to take over Israel this contracts the attackers of Ezekiel 38 with those listed in Psalm 83 which details the immediate neighboring combatants basically their neighborhood everyone who surrounds Israel right now they have to be laid to waste in order for the Gog Magog, Ezekiel 38, or excuse me, Ezekiel 38 and 39 wars take place. 
Furthermore, they also have to have a distinctively different agenda than these parties. Psalm 83, verses 3 through 5, talking about Israel's neighbors, says this, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have, come, they have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They are going to come against Israel. This appears to be a significant difference from the motivation of Magog, Russia, and his allies, which is coming to take the spoils. These combatants here in Psalm 83 are the immediate neighbors, which continue to harass and torment Israel today and are committed to wiping Israel off the map. When we continue in Psalm 83, 6 through 8, it says the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal, and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher also is with them. They have come to help the children of Lot. That many are surprised that the identity of the sense of Edom include the Palestinians of today. So as you can see, everything, and I mean everything, appears to be coming to a head. It appears to be coming so soon, yet so few are ready for what's about to take place. I want to show some video next of Iran and what they have going on nuclear underneath, which is really scaring the Israelis, because I want to talk about what I believe is coming next. So what do I believe the order of events is? Well, I believe before the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war takes place with Gog and Magog, the Psalm 83 war has to take place. Now the question becomes, will the Damascus destruction found in Isaiah 17 take place before or after Elam in that part of Iran, Persia, is hit in Jeremiah 49? I have a feeling one of those two will take place. Let's say that Iran is hit first, Persia, with a nuclear warhead taking out the Boucher nuclear power plant or others in that area, they won't lay down nicely. They will then reach out to all their proxies all around the world and commence the Psalm 83 war, which will then want to take Israel off the face of the earth. This will then cause Israel to take lots of beatings. They will be destroyed very much so in a lot of ways, but they will not be fully destroyed. They will then return fire with their nuclear, taking out Damascus found in Isaiah 17. And by morning, it's all over. This then will set the stage for Israel to finally, with a new world leader coming to power, calming the madness, coming with a seven-year agreement, they will agree to a seven-year accord. A seven-year covenant will be confirmed. Israel will be able to put down its walls finally as their Arab neighbors have been taken out. And Israel can now live in peace. But when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. We know that Israel has been gathered into the land. Ancient cities have been rebuilt and inhabited there in Israel. They have met and they will continue to meet Muslim and Arab resistance. Until then, Israel has established an army for defense. Their adjacent Muslim neighbors and nations are becoming a confederate conspiracy against them very soon. And this confederacy is committed to the destruction of Israel. War then starts between this confederacy, all the neighbors surrounding Israel. However, Israel regains again, my people Israel, quote unquote, from the Lord God Almighty. Israel decisively defeats this confederacy. And Israel has become an exceedingly great army. They also take prisoners of war, and the whole region is reshaped as Israel expands its borders and takes over parts of Jordan and Syria and Egypt. Israel then dwells securely in the land, but for how long? Guys, this is all getting ready to unfold very soon. This is the coming war, and how they're going to take place. I'm going to finish it off with this last cool video showing how wars will be won in the future. And how they'll use drones without human intervention taking out lots of the enemy. 
keep in mind, guys, America is not here. Come 2030, we are no longer a superpower. As you guys know as well as I do, America is crumbling from within. And this is all part of the plan. America must fall for the new world order to take place. Keep in mind, China is not done. There's a reason the 200 million man army marches from the east, found later in the timeline during the Great Tribulation, found in the book of Revelation. This doesn't even include all the earthquakes and everything else coming. But guys, this is what they can do. And this is what they plan on doing. America doesn't even have this many ships out on the water today. These are two Chinese vessels. That in theory, according to this video, were able to take out all of our South China Sea naval forces by using AI technology and drones. I just wanted to thank you guys for being here and joining me here today in this video as I propose that the Psalm 83 war takes place before the Ezekiel 38 and 39. We know that Babylon falls. America falls to its destruction. As we approach the end of days, guys, this is coming to pass very soon. The times ahead are going to get very... Very scary, and I don't know about you, but it feels like we are literally on the edge of the cliff, and we are currently in the calm before the storm. And the storm that comes is not going to be the Great Reset. It's going to be the great wrath of God being poured out upon humanity. Guys, it's not time to give up yet. It's time to go home. Are you guys ready? It's... Time to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Guys, it's time to get ready. Let's go home. We'll talk soon. Guys, if you have any questions, reach out to me at any time. Thanks for watching.